Hey everyone, welcome to the Faith and Fandom Podcast. Today we are doing an Artist's Alley Aftermath edition, uh, discussing the fall Fayetteville Comic Con of 2021. Whew. All right, ready? Let's get into it. Uh, first of all, uh, this was a different style of show for me, simply on the fact that this was the first show I DJ'd while vending. Um, I've DJ'd at cons before, you know, like before and after vending, uh, but this was the first show I was actually DJing while I was vending, which was its own special adventure. Um, really grateful for uh, John Jacobs, uh, one of our Patreon supporters and friend, and my daughter Rosa, who may or may not have been sweatshopped into this scenario. Um, but she also got like a $30 plush Katara from Avatar out of this. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, this was uh, a, an event in the terms of trying to multitask and do all the things did. Um, Fayetteville is a show that I've always loved and, um, it's been some really great stuff with it. Um, and I'm, I'm not a negative person and I'm not saying, you know, I'm not going to get on a microphone and poop on cornflakes. Um, I will say it was more of a challenge, um, in the sense of because I was DJing in the main panel hall, my booth, was in the hallway rather than on the main show floor so that like my booth was in eyesight of the sound booth which is very functional in terms of your DJing um it's not the best for visibility I still had some really great conversations and still got to meet a lot of good people so I know that you know God works it out how he wants to with who I'm going to interact with and honestly one of the things that I struggled with was like I, not being on the show floor made me feel in my own flesh like I was being put in time out or like I'm the unwanted stepchild or something like that. And the reality is I know 100% why I was in that hallway. It's because I needed to run back and forth and push buttons. So like I, gotta, I had to check my attitude several times and it's that same thing where Jesus, you know, tells us not to try and take the best seat for ourselves, but to let other people put us in that seat. Um, and so I had to uh, check my own attitude continually. Um, because, you know, <laughs> I'd have artist friends that would roll in and be like, hey man, let me, uh, let's just pick up your table and carry it on the show floor. And, you know, there were empty tables on the show floor. Um, but again, it wasn't about just my placement. It was about actually being functional. And going back to what I was saying on that uh, Bible passage, that's out of John, or sorry, Luke 14, verse uh, 8. It says, or, yeah, when someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take a place of honor. For a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come to you and say, Give this person your seat. Then, humiliate, humiliated, you have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. For all those who, are exalt, who, all, those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all those who humble themselves will be exalted. And, you know, I really had to just check my attitude because, you know, it is what it is, and like I feel like a lot of my ministry is based on visibility. So when you take away my visibility, it's you know it made me want to be scrappy. But I'm not young or hungry at the moment. Um, so that being said, it was a good show, um, and DJing was a fun thing of it. Um, I DJ. Uh, the music for the cosplay contests. Um, there was a K-pop dance competition, which um, I didn't do a lot for that other than help on the technical end. Their dance troops a lot had their own stuff and music ready to go. Um, that was more just me making sure stuff ran at first. And once they kind of got going, they were on their own. And then, but I also did uh, cosplay lip sync battles. And, uh, you know, 
I didn't know what I was doing when it first started because there wasn't a lot of organization because I was still figuring this stuff out on my own. But uh, but the second day, you know, it was pretty smooth. Um, and, you know, not everyone was going to be happy and there were mistakes made. Like uh, someone would tell me a song, but not an artist. So I'd pick the wrong artist, you know. So if you were if you were to walk up and write on the paper that your song was meant to be, and walk away. You know, if you Google the songs meant to be, the number one that comes up is like a BB, I can't say, I don't know this lady's last name, but it's like a country pop thingy. It's like BB somebody in Florida, Georgia line. I don't know, something like that. And like uh, meant to be is like the song that pops up. What I didn't know is that it was meant to be from a musical called Heathers about blowing up your school. See, those aren't the same songs. So I had to, you know, <laughs> learn to gauge that, but also not be, um, not be grumpy, uh, like when people didn't love everything. Cause like, um, one person, like I had one of my favorite moments is also tied into like a time where somebody was complaining. So it's like, ah, ah. um, I had ran to the bathroom and uh, as I was going to the bathroom, I heard church clap playing, you know, and I'm not the one playing it. So I'm like, hey, church clap. Um, and uh, so I ran back upstairs and I was like, hey, and I there's there's a whole squad of My Hero Academia cosplayers uh, jumping around, doing church clap and dancing in the hallway. I said, there's nothing on stage for the next half hour. Do you guys want to go into the main building, the main like stage area, and do a dance party on stage, whatever you want to listen to, and I'll play it? And so all of a sudden, it went from an empty arena area to being like 30, 40 cosplayers and families like just dancing around on stage and stuff. So that was, that was really cool to like just throw together an impromptu dance party. It's pretty great. Um, then, but that same person that I first approached about the party, like at the end of the show was complaining because I cut the time of the last cosplay lip sync battle off when I was supposed to, like I'm a schedule person. And if my time is supposed to end at, you know, three 30, I'm going to end at three 30. The event that was coming after it was late. So yes, there was time that I could have done more. But it wasn't my time to mess with, so I tried to stay out of it. Eh. And um, I also like I heard her complaining and wanted to be like, "Young lady," um, but it's not that kind of party. <laughs> I just needed to push my buttons and be quiet. Um, so yeah, that was that. And um, as that was going on, it was overall just a really good experience getting to play the music for everything. Some of these cosplayers had some crazy dance moves and a lot of stuff. So that was fun. But I did spend a lot of time away from my booth and um you know, visibility was an issue, but also I just I just wasn't at my booth a lot. And so Rosa did an outstanding job, John did an outstanding job of just, you know, being present and helping make it all as good as it could be. Um did meet some cool people that just were really fans of the ideas of what we were doing um and you know overall it, it was a good experience um i didn't see a ton of what was going on on the show floor there was wrestling this time which was cool um there were uh, a lot of power rangers which was cool there's one of the old red rangers that is on tiktok a lot and <laughs> that was what i saw, said when i saw him i was like hey man i like your tiktoks and he's like thanks this is also one of the Red Rangers that just had an MMA fight with another Power Ranger in real life. Um, so, fun stuff. Um, one of the coolest things, um, and I'm going to give them a shout out, is a table called Volpixie, which is a Pokemon table. Like, they sell Pokemon stuff. And, um... I don't know if I'm legally allowed to say what this other business is, but a certain business in my region gives me Pokemon cards to give away to kids. I don't know. I actually have the permission to tell you who they are, um, 
but a certain business gives me Pokemon cards specifically for the purposes of knowing that I'll give them away. So I had a big stack of Pokemon cards on my table to give away to kids, um, which was going to be cool. And I had a D20 on my table. And so whenever a kid rolled a D20, whatever they landed on, that's how many Pokemon cards they got. It's a fun experience. Um, but the folks from Volpixie had come by my table, and we were just talking when we were setting up. And they said that their dad's a big fan of mine. Um, and uh, I offered, I was like, hey, but you guys can have some Pokemon cards if you want. Now, when I said that, I didn't realize they ran a whole table for Pokemon cards, which is, you know, kind of silly um, in retrospect. But I didn't know. I, I didn't remember what their table was. I just, you know, knew they were nice. Um, and so a little bit later, they came by with a tub of, like, treats of nerdy things. And they said, here, you can take something. And, like, I immediately grabbed a really, really cute Snorlax keychain. And it was on top. And they're like, you're not even going to look through the rest of the bucket? I'm like, nope. There's a cute Snorlax. I'm set. And um, But then what was really cool is, because they knew I was giving away Pokemon cards, they came by and gave me not only Pokemon cards, they gave me a stack. And when I say stack, let's say three inch tall stack of Japanese Pokemon cards. Like everything's in Japanese. And that was amazeballs. Um, and so when the kids were coming up, they'd roll the dice and I'd be like, do you want American or Japanese? And like, they'd be like, ooh, let me get 10 of these. And this, like, literally, it just made it a really cool experience. So even if they weren't there, you know, buying stuff for me, I could give away Pokemon cards. And it was a cool thing. And Rosa had a blast doing it, too. Um, I was also right beside the uh, Millstone Movie Theater booth. Um, who were really cool to me at one of the last events I did at um, a free comic book day. Um, they were just really cool to me and my family, and I'll just leave it at that. Um, they blessed us. And, yeah, I was right beside the Millstone, which was cool. I was also, uh, on the other side of me was LJ Bowens, who does the Nerd Slam with me, so that was fun. And Nerd Slam was really great this weekend, too. Had a lot of good time with that. Um, just ask if you don't know if you haven't heard me discuss it before nerd slam is a trivia competition uh where we ask people hard questions to make them feel like they don't know what they're talking about in the short version um but in a real version it's a lot more like uh just trying to see if people can match wits with each other in terms of the stuff that they're passionate about um and I had a blast with that, um, asking some hard questions. There was a dude who was, you know, a Star Wars person. I think he actually won the championship. Um, but I got to ask him some just like dumb, 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 hard questions like, uh, um, from Ahsoka's species to the name of the robot that David Tennant voices to, uh, you know, just a bunch of different stuff like that. Um, I, uh, I had a good time with that, with Nerd Slam. And again, that was like two more hours out of my time that I wasn't at my booth. But realistically, having my friends at my booth and my daughter, they did a good job. Um, and they got to bless people and do stuff. And I also got to hang out with them, um, or not really hang out, it was more of like a passing by. But uh, Caitlin Register is a photographer for The Variant, which is a, uh online publication of... um the internet it's like a nerdy newspaper online um they do cool stuff but caitlin is a photographer for them and at the last fateville comic-con caitlin took a dope picture of me and uh posted on instagram and i was like thank you so much for the picture and we started off having a really good conversation about uh just life and ministry and stuff and stuff over the past couple months so i was really excited um when she was coming back and i told her i was like look dude uh, if I'm not at my table when you come by, you can have anything you want. Just tell my daughter. And, and I told Rosa too. And, um, you know, she wasn't doing that. She wanted to pay for things, but she just told me that, you know, she grew up as a kid in a Christian school and that the older and the more passionate she got about different things, she was isolated and ostracized. And like the school had a meeting because she wore a Harry Potter hoodie one time. And you know, it's just one of those things of, 
doing what we do, why we do, because sometimes the faith community can be discouraging. Um, sometimes the nerd community can be discouraging, but it's trying to help balance both. And she just really, really gets the vision for what we're doing. So that's great. And I was, it was really neat to be able to connect with her and see her. Um, so seeing Caitlin was cool. Um, nerd slam was a dope experience. Um, ch- double checking my notes. Um, and then, uh, another really cool thing was, a uh, <laughs> the sound dude. Um, so I was DJing, but the, um, the Coliseum complex had a sound dude who was the official button pusher for the volume and stuff. Like he, he had to be the one to push the volume. And, um, which is smart because you don't want somebody blowing your junk up. And as I was working with him, you know, this is not a dude who is into all the things that were happening this weekend. And so when the K-pop dance troops were coming up, this dude was like, what's happening? (laughs) <laughs> and it was really fun just watching his responses to everything. And then when one of the uh, cosplay lip sync battle folks were doing their thing, they chose Bohemian Rhapsody as their song, and it changed this whole dude's world. He was so happy. Um, so it was really cool getting to hang out with that sound guy. And um, then uh, another really neat thing, and this is, you know, probably wrap it up pretty close to after this, was that... Um, LTN Con online was happening this weekend, which is Love Thy Nerds Comic Con. And um I had a panel session about twenty ways to be Jesus at a Comic Con. Um that aired at LTN Con and then I needed to do a QA after. So I did my QA after it, um, sitting at my booth. And um, it was really neat to see faces of people that I know and care about and that are just really cool and supportive um, from across the world. And some of our Patreon supporters like Todd Turner were on there. Um, and, you know, there it was really neat. You know, Silver Souls Gaming, um, there, there was just a lot of neat stuff in that. Um, but just sitting there at my booth doing Q&A to a streaming crowd across, you know, the world was kind of neat. Um, but what was really cool about it is, you know, I had just done a panel on 20 practical ways to like be Jesus at a comic con. And I was the only one at my booth because Rosa needed a break and, um, I let her go. And so when people were coming up to the booth while I was doing that streaming thing, I just had to go, you know, do my whole thing. And so, you know, I'd be in the middle of the conversation with the panel and be like, Oh yeah, dude, I love your Vegeta shirt or your cosplay's nice. Or um oh I or and like one family came up and wanted to know about the books and I had to do my whole spiel about the books and describe it and encourage them and they were really blessed and they bought stuff and you know it was really kind of surreal to as I'm looking at these people eye to eye, just below my eye line are like talking heads of my friends watching this. And so it was kind of neat to see them watch me do this after just doing a panel on it. Um, and then I ended the conversation because somebody wanted a picture and I needed to put my costume on because I was a shy guy. Oh, I cosplayed this weekend. I cosplayed as a shy guy and uh fat gum. And there's photos of all of that on the faith and fandom Facebook page and such. Um, and then when I was fat gum, Rosa wore my shy guy costume. But shout out to uh, Russell and Candace Davis um, of Charlotte, who are some of my cosplay and creator friends. Um, they 3D printed me a shy guy mask, which was super dope. Um, but yeah, that was a. Uh, there's a lot of what my weekend looked like, and there were long days. The con hours were extended to 8 p.m. on Saturday because of wrestling and because they were showing Mortal Kombat, the original one, because some of the cast members from Mortal Kombat were present and doing a panel beforehand. So it was a late night, um, but it was a good night. And um, I enjoyed the show. And like I said, I had to kind of body check my own discouragement. Um, but... I know that God had me where he had me for a reason. And 
you know, as the scripture said, it wasn't my place to try and argue for a better seat. And I I had to keep telling myself that even when my friends were trying to convince me to, you know, move or fight or do whatever. Um, I wasn't being wronged. It was a tactical decision. Um, And, you know, it makes sense on paper. Um, But I will say this. There was one discouraging moment um, that has nothing to do with the show itself. Um, But my daughter, Rosa, who's 13, uh, was watching my booth. Now, our neighbor um, uh, has a 13-year-old daughter as well. That's one of Rosa's best friends. Um, Half of the household of our neighbors are Jehovah's Witnesses. And they're very uh, standoffish. That's one of the reasons why we've never really connected well as neighbors. Like, we're friendly. We help each other out and stuff like that. But we've never been, like, homies. And it's because, like, um, the mom and the daughter of the household are Jehovah's Witness. And, like, you know, that makes us the devil. And um, this was my daughter's friend's first Comic-Con. So she literally was counting down the minutes till her friend showed up. And then when her friend finally showed up, um, her and her dad were standing in my booth and it was like, they had to rush away. And, um, what we're basically gathering is that, um, he needed to, like, she wasn't allowed to be in front of my booth because of the content of my booth. Like, you know, that we were, you know, wrong spiritually and, like that, uh, you know, they had her to run away quickly. Um, and that was really discouraging for me, to, for Rosa to have to experience because she was waiting so long for, um, her friend to show up and then for her to get kind of, uh, juked hard because of the Jesus content that I have. Now, to be fair, to be fair, um, Rosa has her own sturdy Jesus content in her life. Um, but you know, I, I kind of felt bad that she was taking heat relationally for my passions and ministry. Um, now we could be wrong. It might not be that at all, but I will say that that idea is discouraging and, um, yeah, but worth it. Yeah. But still discouraging. Um, so that was just a weird moment. It was like a really weird moment of, a man, I hate this for her. And, um, but, like, I don't even know how to help her with that. Um, so, yeah, that was it. That was uh, Fayetteville Comic Con. Um, dancing and cosplay and Japanese Pokemon cards and um, Bohemian Rhapsody and all the things. Um, it was a good experience. Um there are people that I genuinely care about and that care about me that were involved and I got to do cool things and help make the show run as smooth as possible. So that's it. That's the aftermath. That's uh, where it's at. Um, To my understanding, I only have one more uh, Comic-Con for the uh, year, which is next weekend at Empire City Comic-Con. And, um, so, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, one more show for the year. And, um, hopefully there'll be some more that'll just pop up. But if not, that's where it's at. So I want to, uh, say thank you, uh, for listening. Uh, take a moment to, uh, as always, thank our Patreon supporters. And, um, we've got some new supporters pledging, uh, this month, which is kind of cool. Um, but just to say thank you to those who have already been giving, um, Mike Perna, ta- Mike Perna, 
Todd Turner. That sounds like I'm doing like an Eminem rhyme. Mike Perna, Todd Turner. Um, sorry. Uh, Jonathan Jacobs, Zach Harris, Caleb McGrim, Jeanette Skaggs, Chris Poirier, Chris Cook, Jason Bullock, uh, Christina Ray, Sarah Lewis, Patrick Gale, Rebecca Godlove, Adam Davis, and Stephanie Schwann. Um, thank you all so much for your giving, for your faithfulness, and for helping make faith and fandom possible. And uh, also want to say thank you to Love Thy Nerd uh, for letting me be part of Love Thy Nerd Online Con this year. And for everyone that was in my, that watched my breakout session and interacted afterwards. And, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, but thank you for all for being part of that. Um, and thank you for listening. Uh, if you want to be a part of our Patreon supporting, you're welcome to do that. You can just go to patreon.com slash faith and fandom. Um, we also have our new ampersand shirt um, and hardback books of book seven up as well um, on the website, Amazon, etc. But um, thank you for listening, and I hope to see you on a con floor soon.